people around him wanted to meet with other people. After the music manager chastised Steve Stout for the dissolution of Rockefeller Records, Dame Dash retaliated against him without delay. Welcome back, it's your host Nancy Brown. If you are new here, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. People were becoming less beholden to him, but he was unaware of it. Speaking with Shannon Sharp on the former NFL Players Club Shay Shay Show on March 6, Stout said Dash blew it when it came to Jay-Z and the label they co-founded, which was once profitable, with Kareem Biggs Burke. While he was building businesses, partly he was, he would go off all around the world. Known for being NASA's previous manager, Stout stated he was shocked that Dash and Rockefeller had broken up so soon after the most important artist of his generation, meaning Jay-Z. Like, why'd you guys do all this shit without me? Like, he added, Jay grew up, Jay wanted more. I think Jay saw Dame's ceiling and I think that's really what it was. Everybody wanted more. Dame just had a very particular way of approaching it. He Dame just had a very particular way of approaching things. He's far from stupid very, very smart, very talented. Ego through the roof. So you, there was no working with him. No one wanted to work with him. Jimmy Iovine had this line, when the shit gets bigger than the cat, you gotta get rid of the cat. Dash promptly hit back at Stout's comments on Instagram, writing, this is the reason I had to smack the shit out of it Steve Stout a couple years ago because he's always speaking on other men's business good thing I've evolved. In 2014, Dame Dash told the Combat Jack show that she had assaulted Steve Stout because of a debt. I had been playing basketball in the Hamptons and had broke my foot I was like, by the way, you owe me $18,000. He was like, I'm not paying you. So I limped over and said, yo, I think you need to get out of my office and I'm not condoning this. I'm not proud of it but I smacked the shit out of him. On their program, Cameron and Mace have never shied away from making jokes about musicians and athletes. Now, they've included Drake in the conversation while making fun of Dame Dash. Even though 2024 is only getting started, the hip-hop world's news cycle has already taken us on a wild ride. The rivalry between Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj, along with a less intense battle between Lado and Ice Spice, has been the talk of the internet when it comes to femsies. Regarding male artists, Cassie's investigation into the Diddy affair has yielded more damaging accusations, and in the meantime, Dame Dash is making every effort to hang on to his Rockefeller shares in the face of financial hardship. It was revealed last week that the music executive would need to liquidate his business interest in order to settle a debt of more than $800,000. According to insiders, Cameron and Mace may now be the new owners of those shares. This week's episode of it is what it is addressed the rumors. I'm hearing that y'all are about to get Rockefeller from Dame Dash. The rappers couldn't stop laughing at the predicament for a while when Stat Baby, their co-host, questioned them about the veracity of the rumors. <laughs> Let's just say yeah. hypothetically, right? Yeah, hypothetically. Oh, man. Mace said with a grin while pulling money out of his coat pocket. Considering their unofficial confirmation, some hip-hop enthusiasts believe Dash is making the finest decision conceivable. Would yeah. that be a grandmaster chess move? I'm just doing business, bro. I mean, Dame ain't Trina Sila to Jay, so why not? I say ask for $3M and walk away knowing it's in good hands. If Cam and Mace acquire it, then it's win for them both cause now Cam with the rock and Mace get a win cause of those jabs Hav took at M. One person wrote under a post. Although Dame Dash and Jay-Z haven't been on the same page for a while, Hav has intervened in his former business partner's ongoing legal disputes. It appears like Jay-Z and Dame Dash still have enough chemistry to support one another in spite of everything that they are said to have gone through in the aftermath of Rockefeller. For those who don't know, the latter may have to give up his rock shares in order to settle a debt with Muddy Waters Pictures and film producer Josh Weber. They filed a lawsuit against the music executive in 2022, and they intend to pursue his ownership of the record label in order to obtain their $832,000 judgment. To stop these shares from selling out, however, Hav and Kareem Biggs Burke, the label's third co-founder, intervened. Prior to delving into that, let's go back to 2016, when Weber fired Dame Dash as the director of his murder thriller film Dear Frank. He was accused of verbally abusing employees and turning up to set late, making him ineligible for the director position. The 52-year-old believed Weber made an effort to take credit for a black man's work by trying to market the movie under a different title, The List, and as his own independent filmmaker. Dash hasn't complied with this order, despite Weber and Muddy Waters Pictures' 2022 judgment regarding their lawsuit alleging defamation and copyright infringement. The collection of this judgment was contested by Jay-Z and Kareem Biggs Burke, who contended that Rockefeller's bylaws require the board as a whole to approve any major sell-offs of this kind. Dame Dash was not present at the 2021 board meeting when this decision was formalized, and she did not vote in favor of it, according to U.S. Magistrate Judge Robert W. Leaberger. Still, the court mandated that The Rock provide the U.S. Marshals Service with his stock certification within 180 days. The question at the core of the instant dispute is whether The Rock fell by law's prohibition on transfer 
and sale of Dash's one-third ownership interest in shares of RAF without the consent of RAF's board of directors legally prevents the sale of Dash's interest in RAF to satisfy the judgment, Leherberger questioned. The answer indisputably is no. Hav and Burke still has equal opportunity to buy the shares, and Weber's last attempt to collect the judgment was on February 13. That's it for today, thanks for watching. Tell us what you think in the comment section and most importantly subscribe. See you.